Hello, sunlight. Today, we are adding our last ingredient to a godly life. But before I tell you the last ingredient, let's do a quick recap of all the previous ones. Friends, do you remember them? Hmm, let me test you out and let's see how many of them you actually remember. Are you guys ready? All right, the first one was, there was a bowl of trust. And then there was a sprinkle of obedience, a mix of mercy, a stir of wisdom, a spoonful of confidence, a dash of boldness, and a cup of faith. And the final ingredient in our godly life is this, and it is love. We need a generous helping of love, and we need it every single day. Friends, God wants us to love Him and to love others. God can use our love to draw us closer to Jesus and to spread the love of Jesus to other people. And so friends, today, ask God to fill your heart with love and to keep it coming. Let's spread God's love to everyone that we meet. And now, do you know what time it is? Well, it's time to worship God in spirit and in truth. So let's all stand on up and let's get ready for worship.
Welcome back, friends. Love is not an ingredient that can be measured in a cup or a spoon. Some ingredients must be measured precisely, but love is one ingredient that you can't have enough of. Love is the reason God sent Jesus to you and to me. And in John chapter 3, verse 16, it tells us that God loved the world so much that He sacrificed His one and only Son so that He could forgive our sins. And if you read the Bible, cover to cover, you'll find it's more than just a history book. The Bible is a love story that was written by a God who wants to save you and me from our sins. And God loves us dearly, and He wants us to love Him and to love others in return. And friends, in today's Bible story, it's about a woman who understood God's amazing love. She knew Jesus very personally, and she loved Him very much. And so let's watch this clip together, and let's come back and talk about the main point. Stories of the Bible. Jesus is anointed at Bethany. This is Jesus. hey Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were getting ready to celebrate a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. Two days before the Passover, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon. Hey, 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 come on in. A man who had previously had leprosy. While Jesus was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful jar of expensive perfume. She broke the jar open and poured perfume over Jesus' head. Jesus' disciples were upset when they saw this. They said, what a waste. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. What'd you do that for? So they scolded the woman. Ah, uh, hold on there. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. 
She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered. Welcome back, friends. Wasn't that an awesome video? I learned so much. Now let's talk about the video. There were a lot of men sitting around the table that day who knew the Bible better than that woman, yet what we can see from what was said that very few of them understood Jesus as well as she did. Jesus came to show us God's love, and this woman knew that love firsthand. There was nothing she could ever do to repay Jesus for what he would do for her. And all all Jesus asks is that we love him in return, and that's exactly what she did. Did you know, Jesus said this, he said that the two greatest commandments in the Bible are this, number one, to love God, and number two, to love others. And if we do those two things well, our lives will overflow with so much love. Love will draw us closer to Jesus, and it will overflow from our hearts to other people and the people around us. We simply cannot live a godly life without learning to love God and to love others. And friends, over the last two months, we've discussed eight ingredients for a godly life. Do you guys remember them? Let's do a quick recap one more time. There was trust, obedience, mercy, wisdom, confidence, boldness, faith, and last but not least, love. And this is not a recipe that you're gonna find in the Bible or any cookbook, and the exact measurements on these ingredients, they're not important. But what is important is that we profess our love for God by accepting Jesus into our hearts as our Lord and Savior. And by giving our hearts to Jesus, we will receive all the ingredients we need for a godly life. God will show us that we can trust Him, and He will teach us to be obedient and to show mercy. He will bless us with so much wisdom, and He will make us confident in what we believe in, and He will make us bold about pursuing Jesus Christ. And He will grow our faith, and He will fill us with so much love. So friends, if you have already made that commitment to Jesus, then I encourage you to stay on the path you have begun to walk. Ask God to give you the ingredients for a godly life. This is what I encourage you to do. Spend some time with God every single day, studying the Bible and praying to God whenever you can. And more than anything, ask God to teach you how to love Him and to love others so that God's love can flow through your life into others. And if you have not made a commitment to Jesus, you can begin your pursuit of a godly life today. God sent His only Son to die for your sins because that's how much He loves you. He wants you to love Jesus in return and to place your wholehearted trust in Him. So friends, it's no secret. If you want to live a godly life, you need love. You need to love others, and you need to love the one who gave up his life for you. And if you are willing to love Jesus for all he has done and let him teach you how to love others, you're gonna find an ingredient to a godly life that can change the entire world. So ask God to give you a generous helping of love so that you could do something wonderful for Jesus, amen? So friends, our encouragement, my encouragement is to you is that you love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Let's pray. Heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is good and that it speaks so much truth inside of our lives. God, for the past month, we have learned the ingredients of a godly life. And so today we wanna wrap everything up with the ingredient of love. Remind us of how much you have loved us by sending your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross to die for us. And God, help us to respond so that we can be boys and girls who show love to the people around us. God, fill us with your love so that we can be the salt and the light of the world. God, we thank you and we love you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, I hope you had a great time throughout this online worship. We miss you guys, and we hope to see you sometime soon in person. And so with that said, take care, God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>